is the recession really affecting um, the summer associate employment experience? Um, I want to start with the general question uh, uh, for Steve. What kind of work are you able to give a summer associate in this kind of market? There's been so much talk about how first years are useless. How useless is, it, is a summer intern? Well, um, the last uh, full summer that I, or the last summer that I was at uh, Sherman and Sterling was the summer of 2009. We started our firm in the fall of 2009, right in the heart of the depression slash recession, however you're terming it. And so, you know, at that point in time, I think we had 140 summer associates because it was still the hiring from the year before. So I didn't really see the same same fallout. But as a practical matter, um, in large law firms, and having spent most of my career in private practice in large law firms, um, you know, there's a limited amount of work that summer associates that are, are going to do that are re that's really truly going to be valuable. I think that what is fun and what is sometimes quite useful is if they can get involved in, again, from the litigation perspective, uh, say you've got a case that's going to trial and you've got things that are going to need quick spot research or things that are going to be involved with you know, tracking down a witness or maybe helping prepare an expert or finding some information that's going to be used in a cross-examination. Those are actual meaningful you know, tasks that a, a, a summer associate might do. And if you have an interest in litigation and you're able to, in any way, shape, or form, tag on to a case that's going to trial uh, over the summer, I would strongly urge you to do that because it'll be a great learning experience for you. And depending on the large firm and where you work and who you work for, you may not get that experience for several years once you join the firm. On the corporate transactional side, the same sort of thing is true. Uh, if there's a big M&A transaction going on, there might be some things that you can get involved in in terms of due diligence and such. Uh, you're not going to write the seminal brief. You're not going to write the most important part of the seminal brief. You may not even research the most important part of the seminal brief. But um, I do think that there are some meaningful things that, that you can do, so it's not just make work. You know, yeah. It's not just helping the partner write the article, which, by the way, could be interesting, too. Yeah, yeah, I, mean, yeah. On the, I mean, I don't have any experience on the litigation side, but on the corporate transaction side, it is, it's, it's hard to delegate effectively to a summer associate. There's no sure. question. But I think what, what I try and do, and if you can do this as a summer associate, is get with a partner who is more than willing to just get you on a deal team and so that you can get exposed to what goes on. Because I, I really do think that the, the, one of the main thing that ha things that has to happen in that second summer is for you to decide what you want to be when you grow up. So a lot of times it's, it's challenging up until that, that period of time. Of, you know, a lot of people, everybody knows what a litigator is for the most part. <clears throat> Not so much uh, on the transactional side. And if you can get, you're going to get some experience, but I think it's, it's also just as important to get exposure so that, frankly, when you're making that decision, you really have a, an educated um, a decision making process so you know which direction of your career you want to end up. Yeah, and depending, and, depending on who you are, where you grew up, how you're, you know, uh, you know, whatever your circumstances were in your law school, in part it's just also kind of beginning to appreciate the culture of a large law firm if that's where you're working or a small law firm. I mean, it's just there's just things about the organizations that are going to be unique, but there's also things about the profession that are perhaps quite foreign to the way that, um, you know, you, you've your life experiences have been. And so I think just kind of soaking some of that up is very important, too. Anastasia, are there resources available that would help a summer so that you kind of understand what a corporate attorney does? I mean, my wife's in corporate, and most of the time when she comes home, it sounds like the uh, the parents are Charlie Brown. I mean, I, I literally <laughs> do not know what she does all day. Um, let's say I cared. Um, how would I go about learning? Not, not to show, but... Um, <laughs> No, I mean, I think what I appreciated about practical law when I got there is we do have free resources for law school students, and it's the really basic things. Like, when I was in law school, could I really tell you what antitrust is made up of versus bankruptcy versus mergers and acquisitions? Like, they're words that are thrown at you, but you don't know what they mean. So try to utilize the free resources that you have to sort of, for yourself, read the journal, you know, just get educate yourself it's upon you to educate yourself and really do that work because if you don't you're the one who's losing out you know not only do you have to demonstrate to your uh, employers that you care but it's really really important to for yourself to know because uh, it's funny i talk to unemployed lawyers all the time and it after they get um, unemployed that's sort of like the the impetus for them to start asking themselves do i really want to be doing this and many of us didn't even want to be lawyers and never had the opportunity to sit back and say what should i do with my career 
and really take that. Take that during your summer associateship. Obviously, be responsible and take on the work and be hungry. And you know, maybe you do want to know more about restructuring. Go find that bankruptcy partner, and they'll be more than happy to help you out and give you an assignment. Say, you know, I'm a summer associate. Really don't know much about this. Can you help me? Can I read one of your articles? Can I maybe help you out on a transaction? Can I just sit in and shadow or something? Be curious. Ask lots of questions and try to utilize those free and, and ask that bankruptcy partner, what do you read? Yeah. All right, and and so then go to those blogs, go to the uh, whatever the publications are. It's amazing to me how few people take the simple step of finding out more about whatever is going on in the area in which they're trying to work. So if you want to be an ent entertainment lawyer, I mean, you know, I would be kind of shocked if you weren't reading Variety and all sorts of things like that. If you're if you want to be an employment lawyer, you ought to seek out whatever is important in, in that area and look at it. If you want to do commercial work, I mean, if you're not reading the Wall Street Journal every day and being able to talk about what's going on, I mean, we're right now as we're doing this today in the this spate of activity on M and A, uh, you know, work. If you if you're really going to go to work at a place like a Sherman and Sterling or or uh, or Cravath or wherever it may be, Wachtell, as we talked about earlier, and you walk in and, and you can't at least be conversant as to what's going on out there in the community, you're not going to have a lot to talk about at that cocktail party, and uh, you're not going to be seen as somebody that's really serious about working in a, in a large commercial place. Well, if, you're scared to, sorry, one, if you're scared to talk about those concepts because you may not understand them, ask the questions because people love to talk about themselves. These big partners, these big firms, no, you put in 20 years of your livelihood into something. Right. Wouldn't you want to even talk about it? Like, it's a big, it's, I mean, flattery gets you everywhere, it does. <laughs> but be like, oh, you worked in that really cool transaction. I don't really fully understand it. Can you tell me about it? You know, be curious. And then they're the ones talking, and you learn, and you look good. There are people listening to this conversation right now about corporate law and that kind of stuff, and their eyes are bleeding, and they're thinking, <laughs> I just want to be a judge. How do I be a judge? <laughs> And they're thinking about going into one of these firms and putting in their three months for the summer, maybe longer, to kind of get to that point. Do, uh, as a person who wants to, if you're a person who wants to clerk after you graduate from, from, from law school, do you need to put in your time in the private sector or can you start, can you start off as a 1L doing you know, three month internships for Magistrate Judge Judy um, and work your way up that ladder? Well, I, uh, I still think that if you're interested in one of the, if you're interested in the career of, say, a John Roberts or what have you, it still will behoove you to probably work at a large law firm. It won't, it certainly won't hurt you to do that your 2L summer because these, working at one of these elite firms, there's a certain credentialing function. There's a certain signaling function. So even if you don't want to be at a large law firm for your entire career and you want to be a federal judge by the time you're 40, it still won't hurt you to go to one of those firms just to show, well, look, I am capable of getting a job at one of these firms. I'm capable of getting a, an offer from one of these firms. So I don't think that would hurt you. I, I think, uh, on the other hand, if you are interested in a more public sector focused career, you could also do a non-firm job in your 2L year. I do know people who work for, say, the Department of Justice or U.S. Attorney's Office in their 2L year because they knew from the get-go that they wanted to clerk and then maybe go work for a state or federal prosecutor's office or an, some other non-firm employer maybe after their clerkship. But it still is probably the safest thing to, to work for a firm your, your 2L summer. Uh, if anything, I think it'll make you a better lawyer to see how the, the private sector works. These are people who, if you go into government, are going to be opposite you. And it's, it's just as private firms value people with government experience, government employers should value people with private experience. And, and more and more judges today, too, hire uh, clerks who have had some experience before um, you know, they, they come to them. They, they like people who are two, three years, sometimes even more out. Um, it, it's amazing. I mean, in fact, Justice Thomas had not too long ago, uh, you know, a Kirkland partner, you know, was uh, was one of his clerks, and so it's. Um, uh, I, I think that that if you if you're interested, particularly in, if you're interested in kind of the commercial world, as a, you know, a, as a litigator or certainly as a transactional person, you know, getting some experience in one of these places, if you can do it, if if you know you meet the criteria and all that, is great. If you if and if it doesn't. If you don't, and you don't get hired by one of these places, that shouldn't deter you from what you want to do, because there's lots of ways to get to uh, where, where you may want to be, whether it's a judicial clerkship or whether it's working for a government agency in a, in a, in a, like David was in an assistant United States attorney or 
um, you know, some, some, other, some other type of government job. I think that the main thing here that you should hopefully take away from this entire conversation is that while there are certain rules and there are certain sort of preconceived notions, there are no hard and fast rules. They don't and apply to you. They make, don't apply to you. you, you yeah, that's right. That's right. You make your own, you know, rules when it comes to what it is that you want to do with your career.